Hi, this is Risa and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to review and stitch a lavender punch needle embroidery kit that I bought from the shop Liberty Lodge Crafts on Etsy, the link for which is provided below if you're interested. So here's the kit. As you know, I usually separate my kit reviews from my stitch along videos, but in this case, given that this is a small kit, I thought I'll just combine the two. So the kit includes a pattern here, as you can see, um, a color guide. It includes all of the instructions on how to use the punch needle. And it includes really nice fabric, some carbon paper to trace the pattern and the floss. Now, I did not get the punch needle from the shop initially uh, because I already had punch needles that I have used before. So let me just show you what I have. So I had these punch needles here, which I bought from the shop Embroidering on Etsy, and it's a set of five punch needles. However, the punch needle length or depth, I feel, is a bit too long for this particular kit as it appears that the loops for the lavenders are much shorter. Let me show you what I mean by this particular needle probably not working with this kit. So if I pierce the fabric here, you'll see that the length of the needle is really long. That means that loops are going to be really long and it may not work for this particular design. So I had to keep this kit aside and I went back to the shop on Etsy called Liberty Lodge Crafts again and I ordered the punch needle that's listed in her shop. And this is what it looks like. So let me open the packet and take it out. So the punch needle is definitely bigger than the ones I have and it includes a spacer bead to ensure that the depth of the needle is just what the kit requires. So yeah, I had to buy an extra needle to be able to stitch this kit. So let's get started. I have put the carbon paper under the pattern and I'm going to trace the pattern with a pen. Usually I would have just traced it with a Frixian heat erasable pen over a light pad, uh, but this time around I'm going to use the carbon paper that's included in the kit. Let's get started with the punch needling. So I've stretched the fabric on a hoop and mounted it on an embroidery stand. Now it's important to remember that this kit uses a combination of punch needle loops for the lavender and flat stitches for the stems. So we'll be working on the wrong side of the fabric in order to get the loopy side. So the underside will be the right side of the pattern and for the stems I'll be working on the wrong side which is the underside of this pattern so it's a bit confusing for punch needling it's not like normal embroidering so I'll be needing to work on this side which as you can see has no pattern traced on it so first I'll use a single strand of sewing thread to mark out where the stems and the leaves are and to be able to do that, I'm just going to run big, long running stitches along one side of the stem and leave the ends unknotted so I can pull them out easily when I finish punch needling. So I'm going to do that for all of the stems first and then I'll move on to outlining the leaves. Similarly for the leaves, I'm going to run running stitches on the outside of the pattern lines, like so. Up 
I'm done outlining the flat work and you can see the outlines here with the white thread. Now you can use a different color thread if that helps you see the outlines better. So I'm going to turn the stand around so I can start punch needling the right side up. What I've done is I've separated three strands of the green thread that's in the kit and I'm going to use the threader to thread the punch needle by inserting it here at the top of the needle and you get a little bit of the threader sort of showing and then you can insert the thread into the threader like so pull it out a little bit and then pull it through the punch needle and again insert the threader from the back of the needle insert the thread into the threader and then pull the threader out again and this time the thread will come through the little hole that's in the punch needles. So that's the embroidery punch needle. I wanted to show you how it's different from the Oxford punch needle where I insert the yarn through the loop here, pull it through the line and into the eye of the needle. So very different from an embroidery punch needle. I'm starting with the flat work for the stems. I'm inserting the punch needle all the way in to the bead space. I'm having some trouble here. Let me try again. So inserting the needle all the way in and taking small steps forward. The thread is not getting caught in the fabric and I am trying several times. So that didn't work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try the punch needles that I had because maybe the depth of it um, will arrest in the cloth better. So in this case I'm not so worried about the loops because I only need the flat work for the stems. So this is working out much better. The thread is getting caught quite tightly in the fabric so that's good. And so I'm going to just go ahead and use these needles that I have. In the meantime, I've contacted the shop and given them the feedback about the punch needle not working. And Elaine, the shop owner, has been very kind to offer a different punch needle, an adjustable punch needle this time, and that should be arriving in a couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to that as I have two other kits that I've bought from the shop. In the meantime, I'm going to try and make this work, for this review at least, and I'm going to try and figure out how to get the right depth for the loops when I do the lavender. I've been focusing so much on the punch needles that I forgot to mention that to start off I had cut off one meter length of the green thread and when the thread is over you hold it down and pull it off and snip it off along the fabric and that's going to stay put. So this is the underside of the pattern. You can see the loopiness of the stems and this is the right side. Now as you can see when uh, I start off the punch needle, I do it from the front and I leave a little tail. So don't worry, the loops are not going to come out. I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's what I discovered with punch needling. And here is an underside view of how it looks like when you're punching. So you'll see that it doesn't really come off. The fabric kind of holds the, the threads together and as you punch more loops into the fabric, it kind of all holds together. So it's actually pretty robust, surprisingly enough. So I'm going to let the video run here as I punch needle the stems and give you a view from the top as well as from the bottom. Here's another view of the punch needle that I wanted to show you. You'll see that I am facing the opening of the needle towards the direction that I'm punching in. And to turn a corner, you simply turn the needle and face the opening again, take a step with the punch needle and then continue to punch the second row of the stems. I've completed two of the leaves and I've swapped out the green that was in the kit with a green that I had in stock and I've punched just inside the outline stitch as you can see here. So essentially punch 
inside the outline stitch and I'm just going along the border here and then turning the needle facing the opening towards the direction of the punch and then filling in the space inside the leaves. I've completed the stems and leaves and removed the outline stitches. Now I'll have to work on the back side of the fabric to punch needle, the lavenders. You'll see that the stems on the wrong side is really loopy and unruly and I don't want to have this effect for the lavenders. So what I've done is that I've adjusted the punch needle depth by using scotch tape to make it shorter. So let's see if this works. The kit includes purple, lilac, and pink floss for the lavender. And I've decided I'm gonna start with the purple floss and then mix in the lilac and the pink for effect later. So I'm gonna turn this around because I like to work right side up and start punching flat stitches here because we want the loopy side now to be on the right side of the fabric and the pattern. Now for each of the lavender petals, I'm gonna punch in about three to four punches and then move on to the next petal and you can do this by just taking a bigger step with the punch needle as you move along the pattern and the fabric. I'm going to turn around the hoop to see if the effect is what I want. Yep, that's it. That's exactly the length of the loops that I would imagine the lavenders to be. So that's perfect. So I'm going to continue working in this manner for the rest of the pattern. For the final step, I'm going to randomly punch in the pink floss that's in the kit. So I'm just going to hop around and fill in some of the gaps that's already there in the lavenders. So for this, you know, you might want to cut off more often and then just hop around the pattern wherever you feel like to give it a few highlights of pink. I'm going to use a 7mm silk ribbon to tie the bow around the lavender here and before doing that we need to first iron the silk ribbon. You can use a normal iron. I have a um, straightener that I use. We don't need a very long length of ribbon, just the width of the hoop should be fine enough. You cut a 45 degree angle so it helps you insert the ribbon into a number 20 chenille needle so if you have a chenille needle that's the best to use for ribbon embroidery and on the other end you fold it and insert the needle to create a knot so there you have it um, so essentially i'm just gonna fold the ribbon 
to form sort of the ribbon loops for the bow and I'm gonna rest it in place with one strand of a similar color pink thread or floss and just uh, essentially one step stitch should be enough and it should be small and visible enough so you don't really see it so I'm gonna do that here as well Now for the tails, I'm going to do what's called a ribbon stitch and for that you insert the needle in the center of the ribbon and then just pull through gently. And at the back you can go behind the ribbon, insert it a bit in the cloth and cut off a tail and we will just stitch the tails off once we're done to make sure the ribbons don't sort of come out. So here again I'm doing a ribbon stitch, an inverted ribbon stitch and then a stab stitch to place it. Here again I'm just going to cut out a tail and then I'm going to stitch a simple straight stitch with the ribbon for the knot at the center of the bow. And there we have it. The back has been all stitched up and we have a pretty bow to complete the piece. Despite the hiccups I had with the punch needle, it's a beautiful design for a beginner. Watch my video on three ways of how to finish the back of your embroidery. Uh, to learn how to do that. I've used a felt backing and now it's ready to be hung up. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.